Hello, my name is Tejan Pettinger from Economics Help and today I'd like to look at the advantages and disadvantages of privatisation. Uh, so firstly, privatisation is when the government sells state-owned firms, state-owned industries to the private sector. And the main justification for privatisation is that it is argued that the private sector have greater incentives to cut costs because they have a profit motive. So the private firm would do everything it can to cut costs, increase efficiency, increase productivity, so that it can benefit from higher profit. Whereas when the government own a firm, there tends to be greater stasis. There's less incentive to cut costs because you get the political fallout of making people redundant. And if you make all this effort of uh, labor saving, you don't feel any personal benefit. So it's argued that when a firm is run by the government, it tends to be for short-term political reasons. So there's underinvestment, uh, no dynamism, and just kind of keeping um, people happy from a short-term perspective. But a private firm can be a bit more ruthless in cutting costs and increasing productivity. Another feature of privatization is that it tends to be a lot more successful when it's accompanied with deregulation. This is when a market is open to competition because many industries which are privatized like telecom, gas, electricity and water, they tend to be state-backed monopolies because it's hard to have competition in these industries because of the very big economies of scale. But if you can privatize a firm and at the same time increase competition, then this is an added incentive to cut costs and also to make sure that prices don't rise. Because one problem, one potential problem with privatization is that if you create a private monopoly, then that firm will have a very strong incentive to put up prices to make more profit because it's got a captive market and then the consumer will lose out through higher prices and this will be allocatively inefficient because the price could be much higher than marginal cost. So when an industry or firm is privatized, to make it successful, the government have to either increase competition sufficiently to keep prices low, or they have to introduce sufficient regulation. So it's a kind of irony that privatization might mean the government still needs to be involved. So there are regulators for like the water, gas, electricity and railway industry to make sure that the consumers aren't ripped off. Because since privatization in the UK, uh, the vast majority of the firms have become a lot more profitable. Now, the support of the privatization will say this shows its success because the higher profit is from the greater productivity, lower costs, greater efficiency. Whereas the detractors will say this higher profit is actually a problem because it shows that the private firm has too much market power and that the society, the taxpayer, is losing out in a share of these uh, dividends. Because one reason for privatization is that it can raise revenue in the short term. The government sell off industries and firms and the government get the revenue from the shareholders who buy them. And in the 80s and 90s, the UK government got quite a lot, a big uh, windfall over about 10 or 15 years. But detractors say that this is really selling off state um, assets, um, selling the family's uh, silver, as, as one politician described it. Because if, we had if the government had retained a share in the profit of these companies, then the taxpayer would have benefited from some of the dividends. Another issue with privatization is the type of industry involved. So if it's something like telecoms, uh, you could say that's been relatively successful because prices have come down, a lot more competition, a lot more choice, and the private firms have kind of um, uh, done very well in the post-privatization era. It's partly due to privatization, but it's also partly due to the much better technology. 
I mean, prices have fallen for phone calls, really because of the improved technology and perhaps competition. But if you have an industry like, say, railways or Royal Mail, uh, postal delivery, there are other issues to take into account of externalities, because a good railway system can have external benefits for society, lower congestion, lower pollution, and there's a case to make sure that uh, certain communities have access to public transport so they can get around. And a private firm may cut off all the unprofitable bus and train routes to save money, but this has a social consequence because some communities will lose out, people on low income may not be able to travel around. So this is another issue of privatization, that the private firm may, will prioritize profit, but this may lead to kind of winners and losers. If you had privatization of uh, letter delivery and no regulation, then a private firm would probably want to cut prices for within a city center but increase prices quite significantly for delivering to remote islands. And this is because it's following uh, the profit motive and it would actually be adequately efficient because it would be setting a price equal to the marginal cost. But adequate efficiency isn't the only goal in society because the government may feel that it's worth subsidizing uh, certain loss-making parts of the industry for the external benefits and the uh, issues of equality. So a private firm may know, cut off gas or water to people on low incomes, whereas a, a government-backed industry or government-regulated industry would make sure that people don't suffer because they can't pay in one particular month. So these are some of the issues around privatization and it's quite a controversial topic, especially when you get into issues like privatizing, say, healthcare s systems or the welfare state or uh, schools. But if you look at industries like steel and uh, cars and airplanes and air transport, then there's a stronger case for privatization. 